This is not a drill. We are getting full-blown Photoshop on the iPad next year. So what we got is an article in Bloomberg talking to Adobe's chief product officer where he let it known, I guess he kind of leaked it to the press that they're working on full-blown Photoshop that is coming to the iPad. This is coming the same week Affinity Designer's coming to the iPad. It's coming about a year after Affinity Photo and Clip Studio have come to the iPad. So it seems like the Adobe beast has awakened and started to stir. So I have mixed feelings about this. Part of me is really excited. Part of me is a little bit skeptical. Gonna talk about both of those. But first, let's talk about what we know. One, one, Photoshop, real Photoshop is coming to the iPad. Two, the article says that the app won't be an immediate replacement for Photoshop, but will be offered alongside of it. Hmm, more on that in a minute. Three, they are shooting to unveil this at Adobe Max this fall, and they are shooting to release it sometime in 2019. Four, it sounds like it's gonna be part of the Creative Cloud. So if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you will be able to use it. Five, it sounds like this might be part of a larger project to redesign many of their apps from the ground up, re-architect many of their apps. So that's what we know. There are a couple things we don't know. Here are those. We don't know when it's coming out in 2019. Will we see it at WWDC next June or we're gonna have to wait until Adobe's own Max event next fall? Two, we don't know how robust this app is going to be. We've seen watered down Adobe apps in the past with the Photoshop and Illustrator names attached to them. Is it gonna be more of that? It sounds like it's gonna be bigger. It sounds like it's gonna be full Photoshop, but exactly what are we gonna get? Those details are very light right now. Three, are they working on other apps? Are we gonna see Illustrator, After Effects, Premiere? I got the impression from the article that this is a much bigger thing than just creating a new Photoshop app and that they plan on rolling out more apps as they finish them. All right, so that brings me to my questions. I have two major questions. The first one is, I've touched on it a little bit, is this gonna be full Photoshop or is this gonna be another baby Photoshop? Photoshop does a lot. It is a huge program and the idea of rewriting the entire thing from scratch is a monumental task. I mean, it's going to take years. They've probably been working on it for several years and it's probably gonna take another year to get it out. I think if it does all of the major things that Photoshop does, you know, photo retouching, maybe some brushes, all of the layers and the masks and things like that, all of the core features that people use Photoshop Photoshop for, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. I guess we've seen so many little Photoshop type apps come out. In recent years, we've, we've narrowed it down to one Photoshop app. At one point in time, there were like a half a dozen in the app store with the Photoshop name, each one doing one little slice of the thing. So I guess my big question is, when this comes out, am I gonna seamlessly be able to jump from iPad Photoshop to desktop Photoshop with no differences? Maybe lacking a couple features here and there? Or am I only gonna be able to do one or two things on the iPad, but I'm still gonna be forced to rely on the desktop for pretty much everything? That's the big question. The other question that I think everybody's asking is, is this too late? No. Well, maybe no. I'm gonna go with no. It's definitely late. It is very late. The iPad has now been out for eight years. The iPad Pro is going on three years old, but I don't think it is too late. I think Adobe can still be successful here. I think Going forward, this is a good move. Because Adobe is such a big player in the design and illustration space, I think anything they release is gonna get attention. I think because it's part of the Creative Cloud software suite, a lot of people already subscribe to it. It's gonna be very easy to just, in theory, if it's good, it's it, you're gonna be able to just log into it and use it and hopefully it'll be fairly seamless. And if all that does work out well, there's less of a learning curve if you're using the same app on multiple platforms, as opposed to jumping into something new like the new Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo, where you do have to learn some new things in order to use the app. Part of me is annoyed that they've been so stubborn and kind of lacking vision in this area, and part of me is kind of glad that it has taken them so long to, to come up with this. Annoyed for the obvious reasons, because as a customer, I've wanted it for years. Uh, it, kind of glad for a lot of reasons reasons because it has ended up creating a market where a lot of small app developers could experiment and try new things and really create some great apps. If you think about everything we have now, there are standard touch gestures, two fingers to undo, three fingers to redo, how smooth pinching is when you're zooming in and out, how you can like tap and hold to select colors, how many apps have borrowed that touch gesture. All of those things occurred because you have all of these apps trying new things, trying to figure out what works on this new iPad platform. If Photoshop had dropped 
six years ago, five years ago, none of that innovation would have happened and we would have just had this stodgy desktop version of Photoshop on our iPad. There wouldn't have been a market for all these smaller apps to create this great stuff. I do hope that some of these apps have the opportunity to still thrive and there probably still will be a market for these because obviously it's like 50 some dollars a month for a Creative Crowd subscription, but, but I hope it doesn't really eat away at them because some of them have gotten really good. So uh, my concern, which which I've hit on before, is mainly that they roll out Photoshop Lite and then after a year or two, they decide that it's not getting enough traction and they just abandon it. Adobe kind of has a penchant for doing that, whether it's their mobile apps or a bunch of features that they'll add, they'll add some huge feature, they'll get a lot of attention for it, they'll get some press releases written, yay, fanfare, and then they never update it. Or if they do update it, it's just kind of like a tiny little thing that doesn't make the app better, it's just a gimmick. I think good software is made when you create something new and then you get feedback from users and you refine it and iterate on it and you just keep churning on it for years. So many Adobe ideas get thrown out and left behind. My, my main example of this is several years ago when I first started this channel and I was doing Surface Pro stuff, I was talking about how hard Adobe Illustrator was to use on my Surface Pro. The main problem was that the touch points were so small on a high density screen, it's not just the surface, it's any high density screen, the touch points were so small that you couldn't hit them. And so their solution was to create this Illustrator touch mode. And when I first saw it, I thought, wow, that's cool. They gave me a little guided tour, they invited me to like the forum, I gave a ton of feedback. It, 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 it was kind of a cool first iteration of a product. First iteration of a feature, rather. And the team loved my feedback and they were good to work with and I kept coming back to this point like, you know what, if you just made those hit points in Illustrator a little bigger, like added a preference that said make the hit points bigger, you wouldn't need to do half this stuff. You would, you'd solve all your problems right there. But they were pretty far along and, you know, that might be okay feedback, but they, they're almost done with this feature at the point that I'm providing feedback, so they're gonna release it. So they released the feature. I said, wow, great job, team. Now, here's what you should do to improve the feature. You should make sure you can access layers through there. You can't access layers. Oftentimes, your stroke styles get lost when you go back to normal Illustrator. Like, all sorts of stuff is wonky. It was like the first iteration of something that needed a lot of work to make it good, but it was abandoned. It's been almost four years. I don't think they've added anything to it. Maybe some minor updates for stability and one or two things here and there, but nothing major. It was the start of a good idea to solve a problem. It never actually solved the problem and it got abandoned before they worked it all out. And it was still really hard to actually use Illustrator because the hit points were so small. They never actually added that. So last fall, I was talking to a manufacturer. I was reviewing their tablet and I said to them, hey, do you have a relationship with Adobe? They said, "Ah, oh, yeah, we talked to him from time to time. I said, next time you talk to him, say, we're getting feedback from users that when I, they use it on a high density screen, it's really hard to hit those touch points. Is there any way you could add a preference that would make those bigger. And the manufacturer's like, sure, we, yeah, we could tell them that. And so then I got this idea in my head because I had been making videos about it. I had been like posting in forums. I had been contacting Adobe directly. I had been writing to uh, their product people, nothing. So then I went to some other manufacturers and I said, hey, tell them you're getting feedback from users that these touch points are too small. So what happens? Two months later, I get my feature. Actually came out this winter. Now you can actually set a preference to make those touch points bigger. It doesn't just make it better on tablets. It just makes Illustrator better period. It's a nice quality of life improvement. And it's most likely that this had been on the product roadmap for months and they just got around to the feature and it's all happenstance, but it doesn't matter. I got my feature. But this whole experience left me with this impression that the culture at Adobe is, hey, build cool new features that will help sell software. But I think the long term, what would really help Adobe out is to say, New features are great, but let's focus on the little things. Let's focus on those little, you know, improvements that kind of add up over time. Now, I'm not saying Adobe doesn't listen to their users. They do. I'm not saying Adobe doesn't make small improvements over time because they do. But just looking at the way they've treated their mobile apps, looking at the way they've treated all sorts of features that they've revealed over the last couple of years where they reveal it and then abandon it, it really seems to me that they spend a lot of time creating features that will get your attention early on, but won't solve the problems they're trying to solve in the long run. And they don't iterate on them enough to actually make them really good, amazing features. So my point here is that if they roll out Photoshop for the iPad and they add some token features to it over the next couple of years, 
it's gonna be garbage. If they really make this a focus, it could be great. I hope that it's great. So I am hopeful. Uh, are you hopeful? Are you excited? Hopefully I haven't been too negative on Nancy because this is really big news. What kind of apps do you want to see from Adobe uh, come out on the iPad? Let me know uh, down in the comments, just whatever you're thinking. I want to hear it. Let's discuss it. That's all I've got for today. I'll talk to you guys later.